Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining me as I explore the amazing wide world of pens. And you see two recent pens that I purchased, and I bought these for a very specific reason, which we will investigate later on in the video. And before you start making judgments, these are both Jin Hao. 100 centennial pens in classic colors and what distinguishes these from any of my other Jin Hao 100 pens is they have logos engraved in the barrel which are very reminiscent of the current engravings that Parker is putting into their dual folds and I think that's fine I know there's a lot of people that feel that they have the the right to morally object to another pen maker making a pen that looks similar to another pen. I hate to break the news to you, but that's the way business is, and that's the way the business is around the world. It's not limited to any particular geography or culture. I enjoy these pens for what they are, and they are good pens. They look fabulous. I think it's interesting with the silver trim and the gold trim. I, I ordered them on AliExpress because I don't think I found them on eBay, but they were on AliExpress and the price was great. Here's the listing. They arrived relatively quickly. Here's the order. And they arrived in, in excellent condition for me to show them to you. So let's dive in a little bit. So one of the things that these pens motivated me to do was go back to my vintage Parkers, which we will look at a few of those. And I came up with an interesting question, which I was able to answer, but a question I had not asked myself before. And that's, to me, the whole fun of pens in the world that we are in now, that they, we have such a great choices, and they are choices that we make as consumers, as lover of pens. So therefore, Let's dive in and appreciate and enjoy these two examples of pens. Mr. Crab is going to give you a wink, and we're going to move on. So I think these engravings are done very well. Again, it's reminiscent of what's being done on Parker nowadays, and also reminiscent of what was done on the vintage ones. The black shows up just a little bit better. And I think that's great. I don't know how much difficulty it is to do this type of engraving, because this is actually, I think, engraved, not done with a laser. I'm certain there's some computer control that does the engraving, but it, it looks really nice. Here's what a current modern Parker dual fold, and these are from the Parker website, the engravings that they have, so you can compare them. We'll put the black one down here. And we'll put some of the newer ones above it. Here's a black vintage Parker Dual Fold. You notice that clip is more reminiscent of the Jin Hao clip with the ball on the end. We'll talk about the clips a little bit later. But I wanted to show you the engraving that's on this pen. Ah, there we go. I have a pencil, a white pencil, so I'm going to see if I can bring out the detail a little bit more. The engraving here in the middle, top and bottom, is fairly well worn. You can see it does say Parker Dual Fold, and the pencil, my white pencil, just made a little bit of increase in the contrast. Let's look at another one. This one I did a review on. I restored it and has a great nib in it, and it also has a very good engraving in the barrel. So you can see now where that lucky curve is sitting there inside of a banner, which has been replicated in the Jin Hao version and also in the latest incarnation from Parker. You can see the patent date of 1911 there. This has that single band, which means it's an older version. And of course the cap is in, eh, not the best condition. Hey, it's over 100 years old. If I'm in this good a condition after 100 years, I'll be very happy. Of course, we can't leave without looking at an actual big red. And that does have a patent date on the clip. 
So one of the things that I learned is Parker was great at just using whatever parts are available when they assembled pens. So they may have run a whole bunch of these clips off and then ran a bunch of clips off without the patent date. This also has a, a decent engraving on it. This also has the engraving that's similar with the Lucky Curve in it. Not certain when they changed that engraving. I don't have the dual fold book like I have a vacuumatic book. But now it's very expensive, so maybe I can buy one one time at a pen show. So here's some pens for a color comparison. We have the Jin Hao, the first generation of the Parker dual fold that came out in the late 80s, a vintage big red, and my first Jin Hao 100, which obviously is not red, but orange. But I'm just impressed with how nicely that color matches the vintage. And in my view, it pays homage to what Parker did back in the 20s and 30s. And I think that's important because a lot of fountain pen lovers may not be able to afford a big red, may not want a big red from the vintage style, but they can have a pen, which is relatively inexpensive, made very well, and has a lot of those features, but has a modern filling system and writes very well. So that's why I feel these pens have a, a very big place within the fountain pen community and no reason to dislike them. They are what they are. And no one's forcing anybody to buy any of these. You buy what you want. And that's one of the great advantages that we have in the wide world of pens. So here we have the barrels removed. And we see that design, which is fairly common now with this metal piece that's glued into this plastic section. That metal piece to me gives stability and this is very deep here so the converter seats itself very well. Jin Hao I think did a nice engineering change and put this rubber o-ring here so when you tighten down that barrel that last turn just feels very nice and the barrel is very secure. I never had any trouble about the barrels unscrewing from any of these pens. The other thing I'm impressed with is the silver trim extends all the way inside the pen here on the converter on this metal section and of course the 18 GP silver tone nib which again makes no sense whatsoever but it's a stamping and the way they do the plating is always going to be a little bit different. These sections are pretty much almost identical between uh, the modern version of the dual fold and these Jin Hao versions. Uh, the Parker converter, as you can see, is quite long, much longer than the Jin Hao converters, but this is a generic Jin Hao converter, not necessarily specifically designed to take advantage of that long barrel in the dual fold design. So one of the things that a lot of vintage pen owners did is they engraved their name on the pens. And I didn't make this up. This is the way I have the pen. John Reddy engraved his name on this pen. What an appropriate name for the owner of this vintage Big Red. So remember I mentioned that when I was looking at my vintage pens, the nib had me a little confused on some of these pens. So these two have the nib I expect to see on a dual fold. It's labeled dual fold. This is that nice stub nib. And here are two pens which are the same age as these two. They're Basically, all the other bits and pieces say they're within a few years of each other. But it has an aero design clip similar to the Parker Vacuumatic. So in doing my research, I found out that Parker, number one, would sometimes sub those nibs in. And they're not the exact nib because they have more feathers. Secondly, Parker was very good at supporting their lifetime warranty. So at any time you could send your pen back to Parker and they would fix it and send it back to you. I actually did that in the 70s with an actual dual fold. So they probably didn't have any of the vintage nibs left so they put in these newer design nibs. And here is that remake of the Parker dual fold. As you can see it's a very picturesque nib. It's two-toned. I love the way that 
era was silver and amongst the gold. But a completely different design nib than these vintage nibs. And that's a medium point. You can see it's still pretty wide compared to the rest of these. It was a good writer. I enjoyed it. A little bit close-up look here. The two Jinhauser considered mediums, and so is this Parker considered a medium. But obviously this has been ground and shaped and all of those things that you expect in a high-quality crafted pen. Jinhaus mass-produced, but these nibs write very, very well. And for most users, as well as the Parker does. Of course, this is a Western medium, so it's going to be a little bit wider than the two Chinese medium pens. I do like the two-tone in the gold and black version of the Jinhao more than the silver tone, but they kept to that silver tone theme. I mentioned uh, getting a new pen makes me explore. So in looking for references to the Jinhao 100, I came across this listing on AliExpress for the Jinhao 100, the red one with the logo, with a 14 karat gold nib. It's not inexpensive. The description shows it has a 14 karat nib, only comes in one size. And I may have complained about not having an ornate enough nib. This gold nib looks pretty nice, very classic in its design, and indicates it's a 14 karat nib. Not a pen that I plan to acquire. When a pen gets over $100, there's a whole bunch of other pens like the Vertex and the Norwal and, and others that I find more appealing than just getting an, a pen that I paid less than $15 for with a steel nib, paying an extra $100 more for the gold nib. To me, I write with my steel nibs as much if not more than my gold nib pens and I have a lot of both. So it's just a question of what you enjoy, and to me, I don't get any joy out of just having a nib with a 14 karat marking on it and a nice gold color. What do you like? The Centennial 100 uses this standard Jinhao number no. 6 nib unit, unscrews very easily, the nib and feed pull very easily. I like that logo branding that they put on the nib sleeve collar, whatever you want to call it, and I like that O-ring down at the bottom. For those of you that watch my channel know I think that's important. So when you fill the pen, no ink gets in between the section and this sleeve, which then could potentially leak out and not be a pleasant situation. Again, I really like that two-tone nib. I wish they would get rid of that 18 kgp. But the Jinhao logo was nice. It would have been nice if they replaced that with Centennial or some other branding that would have made it unique to the pen, but they didn't. Very happy to be able to put together these five pens from my collection of pens. It's one reason why I have a lot of pens, because it's easy then to do these types of videos. Here's the Jin Hao. Here's the original Parker Big Red. Matched the color pretty well. Here's a black Jin Hao. Centennial with a vintage black Parker dual fold. And up here is the first reincarnation, rebirth of the dual fold. And as you can see, the color of this pen doesn't match any better than the Jin Hao, the color on the original Big Red. Who's to say how that color may have changed, but I think it's fairly stable. I haven't noticed any of the other big reds that I have. They're all basically the same color. When Parker came out, they went to the arrow clip instead of the ball clip. But it's interesting that Jin Hao used the ball clip. They went for two bands here, one narrow, one wider. These both have two narrow bands, so they're a later generation of the dual fold. So that's how we compare them. So now I've thrown the Jinhao nib into this mix and it is a comparable size but it's you know it's lacking in a lot of nuances number one this 18 gold plate marking here is pretty ludicrous it doesn't make any sense to me like iridium point and a lot of other 
engravings that are there just for marketing reasons have absolutely no bearing on the nib or the quality of the nib. It's a nice two-tone nib, which is good, but I think they could have been a little bit more ornate with their nibs on this Centennial series and make them a special nib, particular to the Gin House Centennial 100 pen, but they decided not to. I'm certain cost had a big influence on that decision. So I thought I would compare the dual fold arrow nib to a Parker Vacuumatic. This is like the oversized model. So the nibs are similar in size. Shoulder here is bigger. I don't have time to do it, but apparently the number of feathers is different between the two of them. The engraving's a little bit different. But the design here around the breather hole and up to the end of the nib is very similar, but this is certainly a different shape here. So they are different nibs, but very similar. So what ink to put in? I'm going to ink up the uh, black Jinhao 100. So I haven't used this ink in a while. I do have it in a nice Wingsung um, pen with an extra fine nib, which I use for my daily note taking. Um, it is probably, I would call it a very, very dark gray. You know, it looks black to most eyes, very matte finish. Chromatography sh reveals something interesting. A lot more color there than what I had, would have thought. Yellow and green and blue. But, as we would expect, extremely water resistant. So let's see how it works in that Jinhao medium nib. I did flush it, and when I filled it, I got a very nice fill in the converter, and I did my three fills just to ensure that everything is well saturated with ink. Now's the time for a small editorial comment and some writing. So those of you that follow my channel know that I love this design. This weight is great. The feel of the finish is nice. I mean, it takes more turns than it should to get that cap off, almost three. Does it post? Well, I wouldn't post a dual fold design. Yeah, the cap is there. It makes for an extremely long pen. It is fairly secure, but not something I would do unless I had no choice. It fits great in the hand without putting that cap at the end of the barrel. Feels good. It's not that heavy. It's uh, about the third of the weight's in the cap. We'll give you the dimensions of the section. If you want any more information on the Gin House Centennial, I did a lot of reviews of these pens and their various incarnations. And I put together a dual fold playlist, which I'll put a link in the video description for those of you that might want to explore with me this design that has been emulated by a lot of pen makers. Enough said, let's see, put that black eel on paper. So this medium steel number six nib writes exactly as I expected. Jinhao has been very consistent with their number six nibs and that is good for us pen lovers. You know they make an extra fine and a fine so you have options. But I certainly like this line, and that ink looks good. Amazing amount of flow. I would definitely call this a very wet nib. 
So I think I've rated this 100 Centennial a few times. We're going to give this one a 9.7. Gets one check for fit, finish, classic design. And the nib gets a check. And because it's a dual fold design, I give it a third check for that. I mean, I could write forever with this pen. I enjoy the way it feels in the hand. That nib is very smooth. Almost too smooth for me. No feedback. You know, the black eel ink is lubricated, so that has some bearing on it, but pff, it works well. I think this pen would work well with almost any ink that you put in it. So hopefully you've enjoyed this look at a pen that I certainly like. And I'm glad it's into my collection. I'm glad I have two, a black one and a red one. So thank all of you for watching. If you want to like, subscribe, I'd just like to, you to stay tuned and comment if you feel motivated. I think the interactions on the videos are very good. Got a lot of good feedback from, from the many viewers, and a lot of time the viewers talk amongst themselves, which is even better. So find a pen you love. Put some ink on paper or whatever material you choose to. I hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying life as we come to the close of 2021. May all of you have a wondrous, joyous, merry new year. We can all look forward to a new year, and it will bring new things, maybe some pens. We've reached the end of this video. We're going to say bye. Wow, it's a very smooth nib. No flex, but then not needed. <laughs>